Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Wednesday, April the 27th. We do have just a two-game slate for Wednesday. Um, so as you know, teams start to get eliminated from the playoffs as series start to end. We're just going to get less and less games each day. Uh, obviously, the Boston-Brooklyn series, you know, that series is over. They were, you know, Game 5 would have been today, but there is no Game 5. So we just have two games today. Uh, both these games could be closeout games too, so we could see these series wrapped up today. Uh, Milwaukee, big favorites at home against Chicago, up 3-1. Golden State, pretty big favorites at home against Denver, also up 3-1. Um, we're going to talk through these two games, kind of share what I like, taking a first look at this slate on Tuesday night. And then as we do go through each game, uh, we'll build out an early core. We'll talk about some players I like at first look on both DraftKings and on Yahoo. Now, as always, before we get started with the breakdown, make sure you guys hit that like button down below. I do always appreciate the likes. If you're new to the channel and you have not yet, uh, make sure you click that subscribe button as well. And also, go check out the sponsor of the video, um, Price Picks. So Price Picks, a player prop-based DFS site. I'm sure most of you guys have heard of Price Picks already. But if you have not heard of Price Picks, you want to check them out, you can sign up with my promo code, promo code NOAH. They will match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. And they do already have props posted uh, for Wednesday night's game. So you can take a look at their board. Obviously, just a two-game slate. So there's not a ton of options up. But you can see what's available. Take a look at their props. Um, again, you're just picking over or under. It is very simple. Have to make at least two picks. But you can make up to five picks. You can win up to 10 extra money on prize picks. Definitely give them a try. Make sure to sign up with that code so you get your uh, deposit bonus when you sign up. But yeah, guys, let's talk through these two games. We're obviously going to be a fairly short video. Won't be too much to talk about. But we'll start off with Chicago and Milwaukee. So looking at Chicago today, some pretty big news out of Chicago. So Zach Levine got placed in health and safety protocols, and it doesn't seem like he's going to play today. Uh, it was reported that he was you know, unlikely to play. Then it was said that he was questionable. For now, I'm expecting Zach Levine to be out. Um, so I'm expecting Zach Levine to be out. And then Alex Caruso, he's in concussion protocol right now, and it seems like he's not going to play either. He's questionable, but he didn't travel with the team Hasn't officially been ruled out yet, but things are kind of trending more towards doubtful for Caruso. So it looks like the Bulls could be without both Levine and Caruso today, which is obviously going to change a ton. I mean, without Zach Levine, that does open up some usage, and I expect the two biggest beneficiaries to be DeMar DeRozan and Nikola Vucevic. Now, obviously, this is a spot where there is some blowout risk. Um, you know, right now, I think Milwaukee's favored by like 12 and a half. But man, if this game stays close, you would have to think it's going to be because of these two guys. I mean, DeRozan should have massive usage here. He's kind of been mediocre in the series. He did have a really big game in game two. But ever since that game, you know, every other game, he's just kind of been mediocre. Um, but I think the shot attempts are going to be there. The volume's going to be there. If the game stays close, I think DeRozan plays over 40 minutes. So he's one of my favorite payoff options on the slate. I do like DeRozan quite a bit today. Um, I think the upside is just going to be there. The usage is going to be massive. The minutes should be massive. Obviously, Blaw is a, is a concern, but... You could argue that both these games have blowout risk. I mean, Milwaukee's 12.5 point home favorites, Golden State's 8.5 point home favorites. We could see both these games be blowouts tonight. Um, but I do like DeRozan on both sides. I think he is a pretty good play here. And without uh, Levine, there's definitely going to be you know increased usage available for him. And same could be said for Nikola Vucevic. I mean, Vuc, he's been solid in this series. He was really good games one and two. Games uh, three and four, you have not been as great, but still Vuc is playing massive minutes. His role's been really good. He's been taking a lot of shots. His rebounds have been really high as well. And again, he's just going to have to play a ton of minutes here. If Chicago keeps this game close, it's probably because of Vooch, probably because of Levine. I think both these guys, you know, probably are priced about where they should be. Maybe they're a little bit too cheap. Um, I think the upside's there, and I think they have, they both have the upside to pay out their price tags um, just because they're, they're, the, the usage is going to be dominated by these two guys. So definitely like Vooch as well. I think it's fine to play him with DeRozan. And on, on Yahoo, I really like Vooch over there. He's only $31 on Yahoo. He definitely stands out as being way too cheap on Yahoo. And then, you know, some of this value from Chicago does look pretty good. So Patrick Williams at 5K, I think priced about right. But his upside, you know, probably is a little bit higher without Levine. You would think his minutes are going to be secure. Played 33 last game. He probably gets, you know, low to mid-30s once again. Don't have an issue going to Patrick Williams. The two guards, though, are the two guys that really stand out for value. So, you know, obviously assuming Levine and Caruso don't play, that should open up a lot of minutes for Kobe White and Io DeSumo. And, you know, both these guys look like really good values. They're both really cheap. Uh, Kobe White's 4,500, Io's 4,400. They're probably, you know, they're going to be chalky, I would assume, but in my opinion, they're two of the better value plays on the slate, and I like both a ton. I think it's fine to play both, and I think on this slate, you know, if Levine and Caruso are out, the Bulls are just going to be so shorthanded that you could probably play three, four Bulls, maybe, I don't know if I'd play five, but you could definitely play four Bulls in one lineup. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of the, the top options on this slate are going to come from Chicago. A lot of the you know, just best projected plays. So I like Io on, uh, on Yahoo too. He's minimum salary over there. Kobe White's really cheap. He's $13. I 
I mean, these guys are just going to have to play a ton. I mean, Io probably would start. He might start in place of uh, Caruso. Like, I would guess if Caruso and Levine are both out, then it'll be Io and Kobe White both starting, if I had to guess. So they would start Io, Kobe White, DeRozan, Patrick Williams, Vooch. Like, I'm guessing that's a starting lineup, but, you know, we'll have to pay attention. Regardless, I think Io gets more minutes. He's only 4,400. He's, a, he's really, you know, going to be a really good value. And then Kobe White, I mean, we know he can produce when he gets minutes. He's a guy that can score. Um... Playing with DeRozan, playing with Vooch, his usage might not be as high, but he'll probably get some time with those guys off the floor. Again, he's cheap. The minutes are going to be through the roof. So, yeah, I like both these guys for value. The rest of Chicago, like Javante Green, Derek Jones Jr., I don't know if I really get to any of these guys. I think really it's just going to be Io, Kobe White, DeRozan, Vooch, Patrick Williams, probably just the starters. Don't know if I'm going to go to anyone off the bench. Maybe like a, a Derek Jones Jr. I mean, he's kind of been in the rotation. He has played in every game in this series. Um, not a ton of minutes, but... Maybe he plays some extra minutes. If you wanted to go to someone off the bench, it probably would be him, for me at least. But that's it for uh, the Bulls. Let's go ahead and talk about Milwaukee now. So, obviously, Chris Middleton's still out for Milwaukee. So, that opens up, you know, plenty of usage. Both Giannis and Drew should be the two be uh, biggest beneficiaries. And, obviously, you know, in this spot against Chicago, you would expect them to, to dominate the usage. If if Milwaukee, you know, maybe keeps this game closer, if, you know, they blow out, uh, Milwaukee, or blow out Chicago, I should say, it's probably going to be because Giannis is having a massive game. Like, I don't really see, I don't think Milwaukee blows out Chicago here if it's, you know, if Giannis isn't having a, a massive game. But then again, you know, they, they blow him out in game three and Giannis only had, you know, 40 draftings points that day. Um, I think Giannis is definitely in play today. Obviously, there's a little bit of risk here with the with the blowout. Um, for him to pay off that price tag, he probably needs to get his full minutes. But I think on this slate, you know, with there being, you know, more value because of Levine being probably out, Caruso being probably out, you know, there's going to be value on this slate, so you could definitely go to Giannis, no issue there. Uh, Drew Holiday, I've been pretty high on so far in this series, especially the last two games without Middleton. He's been solid, hasn't been like, you know, great. He's put up 36 and 42 drafting points, but he's played good minutes, played 30 minutes in that blowout, and then last game played, played 37 minutes. He did lose a few uh, extra minutes in that game because of blowout as well. I would think if this game's close, we're getting close to 40 minutes from Drew. At 8,600, I mean, he's definitely in play. I think I would rather go to DeRozan and Vooch on the other side of this game. But yeah, I don't have an issue with Drew Holiday. And then Bobby Portis, I mean, the last two games he started for, for Middleton, he's been solid. La uh, first game, game three, played 25 minutes, was really productive at 41 DK points. Last game, played 33 minutes, which is good to see. Uh, Bru uh, Brooke Lopez did get into some foul trouble last game, which I think did boost Portis' minutes a little bit. But Portis, you know, wasn't as productive last game, only 28 DK points, but the minutes were good. We know Portis is a productive player when he does get minutes. The price tag has come up to 6,500 now. So, like, I don't think Portis is just this slam dunk free square or anything. But he is a playable option. Brook Lopez, I mean, we've seen him take a big hit since Portis has been inserted into the starting lineup. Portis is a high usage player. So, it doesn't really help Lopez that Portis is out there more. Um, so, I'm not super high on Brook Lopez. He's not really that appealing. I mean, Grayson Allen, he's been playing great the last two games. Off the bench, you know, these last two games without Middleton, Grayson Allen has put up 36 and 38 drafting points, but he's been doing it on really efficient shooting. He shot 66% from the field and 71% from three in game three. Um, and then uh, last game in game four, he shot 83% from the field and 85% from three. I mean, the dude's just not missing right now. There's obviously some regression coming for Grayson Allen. I would temper my expectations a little bit. Um, he has been good in the minutes he's played without Middleton this year. He actually does get a pretty good bump in usage. But you're paying a premium for Grayson Allen. If he's going to be really popular because he's had back-to-back -back good games, this is a guy that I would be fine fading just because he is a very scoring-dependent player. And if he's not shooting 80% from the field again, he's probably going to disappoint at this salary. I'd much rather go to Pat Connaughton, who's way cheaper and you know is a similar play. I mean, I think Allen and Connaughton project pretty similarly. You know, I would just rather play the guy that's $1,400 cheaper. Connaughton should get similar minutes to Allen, if not maybe a few more. Last game, Connaughton played 28 minutes. He probably plays you know, mid to high 20s. Once again, he's only 3,800. If you're looking for like a punt value play below 4K, I think Connaughton's probably your best like punt value on the slate. Um, so I do like Pat Connaughton for value. Don't think I'm going to Wes Matthews or anyone else on the Bucks. So that's probably it for this game. Let's go ahead and move on to the to the next game, talk about Denver and Golden State. So you know, on the Denver side, you have Jokic at the top who on a two-game slate is obviously in play. I don't have to tell you that. I think for me, you know, approaching this slate, I'm kind of looking more towards like the the balance build, going with guys like DeRozan, Vooch, you know, Drew. Uh, we'll talk about Steph in a second, like going with those guys and then, you know, kind of fitting in with whatever fits. But if you want to go stars and scrubs, if you want to play, pay up for Jokic, I don't have an issue with that. I mean, in order for Denver to win this game or even keep this game close, it's probably going to be because Jokic is going off. I mean, Jokic, 
Obviously, last game, a little bit disappointing with only 54 DK points, but he did score the ball a ton, had 37 points, back-to-back -back games with 37 points for Jokic. If this game's close, Jokic is going to play like 40 minutes. Obviously, there's blowout risk here, but you know there's blowout risk in the other game too. Um, so I, I think Jokic is in play. Between him or Giannis, I give a slight edge to Jokic. It's it's really close between those two. If I had to pick one, I, I'd slightly lean Jokic over Giannis today. Um, but yeah, Jokic is for sure a good option. The rest of the Denver guys, you know, Aaron Gordon, Will Barton, Monte Morris, these are guys that I really don't ever get excited to roster, but I will say that Aaron Gordon has been playing well the last two games, uh, 42 and 40 draftings points, been playing good minutes as well. I would think if this game's close that we do get like mid-30s minutes from Aaron Gordon. So he's probably my second favorite play on Denver behind Jokic. Um, the 6K price tag, I think price, he's priced where he should be. I wouldn't expect him to continue to put up 40 fantasy points every night, uh, but I definitely think, you know, Aaron Gordon's in play. Will Barnes kind of been disappointing the last few games, but he should get like mid-30s minutes. He's he's in play for me. I don't have an issue with Barnes. Just probably would rather go to Gordon. And then Monte Morris probably gets like low-30s minutes. At 5,400, I think he's kind of priced where he should be. Um, but he's definitely playable. If I had to rank the Denver guys, I would rank them how they're priced. You know, Jokic is my favorite by far. If I could get to him, then Gordon, then Barton, then Morris. And I don't think I'm going to anyone else on Denver. I mean, like... Bones off the bench has upside if he gets hot. I mean, he got hot last game, had a really big game in only 20 minutes. It's a two-game slate, so if you wanted to play Bones in tournaments, like, I don't hate it. I think he's playable. Austin Rivers actually played a lot of minutes last game, but he was just, he was terrible. I mean, he had 17 draftings points in 36 minutes. Rivers, on a point-per-minute basis this year, has been, you know, super, super unproductive. He's not a high usage player, doesn't take many shots. He's 3,500, and he might play like 25 minutes, so he's a playable option on a two-game slate. But like, I'd rather go to Pat Connaughton if I was looking for like a punt value play uh, that cheap. And like Jeff Green, Boogie, I mean, I just don't think these guys play enough to be viable. So let's go ahead and talk about the other side of this game with Golden State. So looking at the Warriors here, you got Steph Curry at the top for 9K. You know, Steph, he's normally a guy that I don't really prioritize paying up for because he does have a fairly low floor if he's not hitting his shots. But I, I will say that on this slate, you're not paying a premium for Steph. He's only 9K. You know, Jokic is over 11K. Giannis is over 11K. Those guys are way more expensive. Obviously, Steph, you know, doesn't project as well as those guys, but Steph has just as much upside. I mean, it, no one would be surprised if Steph put up 65 DraftKings points today and was the highest scoring player on the slate. Um, and it, it was reported that Steph is no longer on a minutes limit. I mean, we kind of expected that because last game he played 37 minutes. So I think we're going to get like 36, 38 minutes from Steph if this game's close. I'd assume Steph is going to be back in the starting lineup. Um, they've been bringing him off the bench, but does that continue? I'm not sure. Um, I don't think it matters anyway. I think Steph's going to play 35, 36 minutes regardless. We just, you know, we need the game to stay close. At 9K, I think Steph looks like a pretty good payup option today. He might, you know, when you factor in like points per dollar wise, he might be my quote unquote favorite stud on this slate. Um, you know, he's closely priced to DeRozan. He's closely priced to Vooch. I like those guys as well. Uh, but I definitely think Steph at 9K is too cheap right now, especially now that he's, you know, no longer on a minutes limit. And then on Yahoo, I do like Steph over there too. Thirty-eight dollars, I think you know, probably probably too cheap on Yahoo. He probably should be you know, forty-three, forty-four dollars over there. Um, then the rest of the Warriors, Jordan Poole. I mean, he's been good. Like he's been playing huge minutes. Obviously, the upside with Steph back in the lineup is not as high. But you can look at the minutes. I mean, thirty-nine last game, thirty-four the game before that. He should get probably low to mid thirties minutes. I would think maybe upper thirties. Um, Seventy-four hundred, like Poole's price, up probably where he should be, especially now that Steph is back. But Poole is still playable because he will get huge minutes. Klay Thompson should play pretty big minutes as well. Obviously, Klay is a, a very scoring-dependent player, so he does offer a pretty low floor on the days where he's not, you know, shooting the ball that well. He can give you, you know, 26, 28 DK points. But last game, we saw him get really hot, shot, shot 12 for 20, 7 for 11 from 3, had 43 draftings points. Klay's, Klay's a fine GPP play. He feels like, you know, for cash games, you're probably not going there. But for tournaments, I would think Klay's going to be fairly low-owned, even on this two-game slate. Um, so he's someone that you could definitely look to in tournaments. Draymond, I mean, he should play 34 to 35 minutes here if this game's close. We've seen his minutes be back up to normal the last two games. Obviously, games one and two in this series were both blowouts, so Draymond didn't play a ton of minutes in those games. Well, last two games have been competitive, and we've seen Draymond play 35 and 34 minutes. So if this game is close, which is kind of a big if, but if this game is close... I think we get about 34, 35 minutes from Draymond. We know he can be productive. He can stuff the stat sheet. He can do everything. Having Steph out there is good for Draymond because Draymond, you know, gets a lot of assist off of Steph. Um, you know, Draymond's not a guy that's really going to create his own shot anyway. He really thrives off of, you know, feeding his guys the ball, getting assists, you know, getting rebounds, getting those hustle stats. 
Draymond, when he has a big game, it's because he gets like a triple double or he has like eight points, 12 rebounds, 12 assists, three steals, two blocks. Like that's a big game for Draymond. So I think it's 6,700. Draymond's definitely in play. Obviously, you know, his minutes should be good. He, they're going to need him out there guarding Jokic. He's basically, he's basically been the primary defender on Jokic in this series. Um, and then the rest of the Warriors, I mean, like Wiggins, he's just been like, okay. I mean, I never get excited to roster Andrew Wiggins, but he should play pretty decent minutes. You know, low 30s minutes if it's a close game. He did have a big game last game with 37 DK points and 37 minutes. I think it's a, a mid-range small forward option. Wiggins is fine. You know, I don't get excited about him in tournaments. I don't know if the upside's really there, but he does feel like a pretty safe play. Probably gets you at least like 25, 30 DK points. You know, so maybe in cash games you could play Wiggins, you know, depending on how he projects. But yeah, the bench guys from Golden State, like Otto Porter, no thanks. I mean, the bench guys just don't play enough to really be viable. I think, you know, if you're going to look to any of these bench guys, you're probably just looking to them in like large field tournaments. If you want to play for the blowout, I mean, we didn't really talk about that, but if you want to play for like the blowout, you can maybe go to Kaminga or, you know, maybe Gary Payton would play in a blowout. Not sure. Those are things you could do on a two game slate, but that's all that I got for Golden State, I think. Um, And that's it for this two game slate. Again, guys, you know, just two games today, so it was a fairly quick video, but. Hope you guys still enjoy this breakdown. I hope it did help. If you enjoyed, you know, make sure you hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button as well. Go check out Prize Picks. Again, you can sign up for Prize Picks and use my promo code, promo code NOAH. Uh, they will match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code. And you can take a look at the board that, that they have right up, uh, right now. They already have up for Wednesday's games. We do have a lot of props available. You can take a look at what stands out to you. Make some selections. Um, again, just picking over or under. As always, I will have my Price Picks video posted for today, probably you know an hour or two after this video goes up. I'll post my Price Picks video talking through you know a couple of my favorite plays that I like at first look for the Price Picks slate. Check that out, you know if you do already play on Price Picks. But yeah, that's all that I got for today, guys. Wish you the best of luck on this short two-game slate. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it helped, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.